everyone and welcome to this week's art gallery vlog in Budapest. We're starting out at Varfolk Gallery, which is showing works by Anna Nemesh. In all these works, Nemesh is exploring the human figure, but you can see a lot of these images have kind of the outline of the human body, but then the interior is filled with these ink droplets. And this ink and paint that she uses to build up the figure are really interesting because from afar you see these kind of organic swirls in motion, like a like an ink drop falling into water. But as you get closer and you can see the texture, there's so much more to it. And at times it looks very rough, like you're seeing the surface of deteriorating stone. I found that from afar these works almost look a bit realistic. Like a, like a blurry photograph or something, but as you get closer you realize that there's no like defining characteristics or often facial features of these works, and in the ones here you see like perhaps two bodies kind of merging into this one shape without necessarily a clear definition of what is what. And, uh, and I think this fact that we can't define exactly what we're seeing and it's a bit unclear makes it a bit eerie to see you know we don't we can't latch on to a face or something that we know is true and i thought this was really interesting in her works and namish says that she's not looking to portray the exterior of the human form and said she's looking within and she's trying to portray the thermodynamical occurrences that are happening within the body and almost finding this similarity between all humans that happens from within and she has a quote saying the body is purely a vessel for the regularity that follows the human form i found these works super interesting and unlike anything i've seen before so if you're in budapest make sure to check it out before april 2nd next is a group show shown at vizi varoshi gallery and these works were selected from the amadeus contemporary collection I thought this exhibition had a nice variety of works, and there's a lot of different styles as well. Compared to the solo shows, like the one that we saw before this, uh, you can really pinpoint how all these works are different. And um, whereas a solo show, the works might blend together because they're all in the same style, these kind of stand out for their differences, and you can really start to appreciate them. And I like that they also included these multimedia works and not just paintings within the show. There's some sculptures and even I think a book upstairs. And it's nice to see these all put together in one exhibition. If you're interested in seeing the show in person, it's open until the 26th of March. Next up is Art and Antiques Budapest, and this was a really nice fair. Um, it was only up for the weekend, but it had so many different options. There was galleries showing art, and there was also antiques and furniture, and really just anything you could be wanting in the art world was there. You can see each of these galleries have their own booth and they're showing works by the artists they represent. It was really interesting because you have some sections here where it's antiques or like older furniture and these kind of things and then that's right next to a contemporary art booth. So it's, it's nice to see it all put together like this. And then you can see here, this is the other section of the fair, and the venue is really beautiful. I love the ceiling, it really adds to the atmosphere. And in the front here, there's these furniture booths, and they're selling designer furniture pieces. 
And then these kind of white walled spaces seem to be more contemporary art galleries. The works were primarily done by Hungarian artists. And I found it really great as a way to learn about and explore some Hungarian artists that I hadn't heard of before. And you can just see from this clip, it seems like the galleries just keep going on and on. There was so much to explore while we were there. And there was even um, some rooms off to the side as well with some hidden galleries. And yeah, it was just a really nice um, experience. There was so many different things to see. I will say I think some booths had perhaps like more quality art. But I think this might play into the fact of there being different price points and allowing more people to start collecting art, which I always appreciate. I always think that if you're new to collecting art or you're just, you know, starting to get interested, art fairs like this are a really nice way to kind of introduce yourself to the art market and see what grabs your attention and start to explore the price points. And you just get a good taste of so much different art at once instead of going to a single gallery you know only showing probably 10 to 20 works at a time here you're seeing many different galleries showing many different artists and all these different time periods and things it's like a taster of what you could be collecting I really like these works in this in this blue room here. This is for an auction house, and I think just by nature of it being an auction house, these were probably more well-known artists and pieces that were likely to go for more money. Um, but yeah, I thought it was like a really beautiful space, and I loved almost all the works that they had on the wall. So even though this fair was only for the weekend, a lot of these galleries have permanent locations that you could go and visit and likely see some of the same artwork in person. And it's also just a good reminder to keep an eye out for art fairs as a way to explore the art market and, you know, learn more about what kind of art you like and what art you could collect. Next, we have hybrid art space, showing works by Zoltan Kovac. And these were a group of uh, sculpture type pieces, um, mostly done in wood and metal, and they were really beautiful. I feel like when I go to an exhibition that's filled with more sculptures or really anything besides painting, I have to remind myself to look at things differently. Um, it's easy to just kind of dismiss sculptures about um, really observing them and seeing the detail that goes into creating them. I really like the different materials used here. You can see this bronze that looks so heavy and stable and then these works of wood that look so delicate and light. I thought this was a really interesting combination of works and if you'd like to see it in person, it'll be open until the 4th of April. The final art gallery of this week was Titok Gallery. And in Hungarian, this means secret gallery, and I think that was the perfect name for this space. It was one of the most unique art spaces I've been in a long time. And there was even a surprise for us at the opening that I hadn't known or expected. They had this beautiful opera singer. She was so amazing, and it just really uh, rounded out the gallery opening. exhibition was a group show with 34 artists and it was in collaboration with the UNESCO Arts, Letters and Sciences Club of for Greece. 
And again in this exhibition I felt like there was a really nice wide variety of pieces shown and again I just love the space and the experience of the opening. And the secret gallery had one more surprise for us. Down the back staircase it's almost this underground castle-like um, spiral staircase that takes you down to the basement where there's some extra secret artworks. And I absolutely love this space. I felt like we'd gone back in time and found um, like a king's hidden art gallery or something. It was so cool and I really recommend checking out this art space if Thank you so much for coming along for this week's art gallery vlog and make sure to subscribe to see more in the future.